the sun that all will see that I am the one because I'll come again. There's no power on earth to keep me back. Yes, I'll come. sing that a few weeks ago and I thought that would be absolutely perfect for a sunrise service. We call it a sunrise service because the sun will be rising over here within the next few minutes. But it's really an S-O-N rise service. The sun of God did indeed rise. There's something about a cross and many of you have heard me say this many times. I just love a cross. I love what it stands for. And you've heard me say this too. In fact, this morning was no exception. When I go to the hospital in the mornings, I always go to the coffee pot. And right across from the dining area is the chapel. And sometimes early in the morning, I'll spend time right there. But I always look at that cross. I always look at that cross. Sometimes I go over and just touch it. And when I do, it reminds me of what that cross really stands for. It reminds me of the love of Jesus Christ and what he did so that we could live and to have life abundantly. Today, it seems like crosses mean a lot of things to a lot of people. I'm not sure that we even understand the impact of what the cross really is. I want to read from Zechariah, and I've got my New Testament with me. Where in the New Testament is the book of Zechariah? <laughs> it's not in the New Testament, okay? So if you're looking for it in this book, you're going to have to memorize it. And I sort of did, but I wrote it down too, okay? The prophet Zechariah was telling this, writing this, several hundred <coughs> years before Christ. Talking about the mourning of the, the, the one that was to be pierced. I'm talking about mourning, M-O-U-R-N, mourning. He says in the 12th chapter, And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieves bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. Obviously, that was prophetic writing. A prophet was prophesying what was to come, and obviously we know what the outcome of that was. Interestingly enough, the Bible never tells us that Jesus ever smiled or laughed. Now I'm sure he did. I'm very sure he did. Uh, particularly when he found himself with children and other areas of ministry, even with his own disciples. Um, but uh, I think uh, Isaiah, when he described Jesus as being a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. When we study his life, we know that Jesus was a man of sorrows and one that was acquainted with grief. When he was born, Herod was out to kill him. When he began his ministry, even his hometown became offensive to him. And then even in his closing years, we find where Judas betrayed him and Peter denied him. So he knew something about sorrows and knew something about being acquainted with grief. But his suffering did not begin there at the cross. 
Now we know the, the cruel some actions that took place uh, at the cross, but it was those events that led him to the cross. He had a purpose. God had already ordained a purpose for him. Christ died in terrible pain. He died for our sins. And I'll just simply remind you, it was our sins. It was not his sins. He lived for 33 years and lived a sinless life. I can't live 33 minutes without living a sinless, without living a sinful life. But he lived his entire life for that purpose. Now let's just run the clock back, okay? Say 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the approximate time that Christ died on the cross, to 3 o'clock in the morning. And try to think about the events that took place in those last 12 hours or so. He was arrested there in the middle of the night, if you might recall. He was slapped. He was pushed around. He was beaten. He was slapped again. He was crowned with the thorn of crowns. And by the way, I did have that thorn of crowns that I made uh, several years ago. It wound up missing. I'm in the process of making another one now because I know where I can get those crowns. But, but to hold that crown in your hand and to think that it was something like that that penetrated his scalp, that thorn of crowns. And then he was scourged by what is known as the cat of nine tails with, with the, the, the scrappings of, of bone and, and metal and, and stone and that lashed across his body and the brutality of all of that just almost brings me to tears I think about the nails that were driven into his hands and his feet. And then he was crucified. Now here we are standing before a, a cross, three crosses, somewhat similar to what that scene was there in Jerusalem. And there was a mob of people there too. Ironically enough, a few days before, so many of the same people were singing Hosanna, Hosanna, glory be to your name as the made triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And then, and now they're crying out, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. We try to picture that scene that day. You know something about his life, you know something about his ministry, you've seen the flocks of people following him. So here you are. You watch him on that cross. And he dies. Was Jesus Christ a failure? If you wanted to believe that, you certainly had a good case. But when you look at what has happened, at least to that point in time, he was born to an unimportant family. He was born in an unimportant village. He was ignored so much of his life. He was taken for granted so much in, in, in his ministry. He was laughed at and mocked upon so many times. And then the powers to be didn't want to have anything to do with him uh, except try to uh, annihilate him. And then in the end, he was crucified as a criminal. The sufferings that he experienced are unspeakable. I'm not even sure that we could ever begin to imagine. Even looking at, at, at movies and films, I'm not sure they can really give us a good picturesque image of what uh, really took place. And then, then he dies. We went through the nine things uh, of the cross here several years ago, a series of sermons. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? This time we feel the same way. God, why hast thou forsaken me? 
Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Verily I say unto you, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He said that to whom? To one of the criminals on the cross next to him. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Woman, behold thy son. Behold thy mother. The sixth saying on the cross is, I thirst. And then the last one is, it is finished. Now in today's morning services, we'll be looking at that one a, a little bit more in detail. So if you are one of those fault finders that are trying to make your point, that Jesus Christ wasn't really real. He lived, he died, he was crucified. <laughs> you saved others, you can't even save yourself. But this is not where it ends, folks. If this is where it ended, then we would indeed have nothing to celebrate. <coughs> this would indeed be a very sad day. We wouldn't have Christianity to celebrate. So we know for a fact that this is not where it ends. <coughs> Christ did not fail. He came and fulfilled the purpose for which he was sent. That's why he was saying, it is finished, and not I am finished. It is finished. So I encourage you to run to the cross, cling to the cross, and cling to the promises that a resurrected Savior gives us. That's why we come here to celebrate a risen Savior. Yes, he died on the cross, but he didn't stay on the cross. That tomb is empty. Now, I would love to do some kind of an enactment in allowing this building here, this little storage building, to be a tomb and have a stone there and have it rolled away. <coughs> and we may count on doing that. I do something every year. I'll hand out these little nails. They're actually just masonry nails. But it reminds me of the nails, the spikes that were driven through Jesus' hands and feet. And I don't, you may want to take one of these. I ask that you do. And you may have one right now. What I'd like you to do is keep that in your pocket. I've got a man in town that was out here one year. He showed it to me here several months ago. He says, you know what that is? Well, I know exactly what it was. He says, that's that nail you gave out at sunrise service. And the purpose of handing this out is whether you have it in your pocket, you have it there on your coffee table, there where you have your devotionals, wherever you might be, every day, you are constantly reminded of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. <coughs> We shouldn't have to be reminded, but when I reach into my pocket and pull out my change and I pull out a nail there, it reminds me of my sin. It reminds me of my shortcomings. It reminds me of my iniquity. It reminds me of a Savior that loved me so much that he died for my sins. And through his grace and through his love for us, died so that we might be able to live and to have life so abundantly. We can't know abundant life without him. I-N-R-I. -I. I've got this. Uh, we're going to put this up here today. It never lasts too long. I'm going to try to get a wooden one to make it stationary. I've told you this every year. I don't think there's a sunrise service that we've had that I haven't mentioned that. I-N-R-I. -I. You know what that stands for? Anybody? Okay, you're getting real close there, Jerry. In Aramaic, the, the J's are made like an I. Jesus of Nazareth. R stands for Rex. Rex meaning Jew, uh, meaning uh, king. king of the Jews. Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. 
That was slapped up there on the cross, that inscription. That was a mockery to him. They didn't see him or identify him as being a, a king. But he really was, yes. So wherever Christ is in your heart, wherever he is in your life today, I challenge you to look at yourself. Make sure he's right here. Carry him with you and allow others to see the saving grace of Jesus Christ in your life every day. I've entitled this message today, Sometimes You're Known for What You Don't Say. Now, far too many times we're known for what we do say and get in trouble for that sometimes, for what we do. But we're going to be looking at someone who was known for what he didn't say and what he didn't do. Let me begin by saying, 24 years is a long time. 24 years is a long time for anything. But 24 years...